Good morning, good morning. Welcome to Love this day. 
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Once again, happy Mother's Day. Every day is Mother's Day, but this is a special day that they sit aside for us to celebrate mothers. Hallelujah. Oh, bless you, oh God. Thank you, oh God, for allowing us to see this day called Mother's Day separate, celebrated as Mother's Day. Thank you, God, for every day, oh God. Thank you, O oh God, because someone woke up this morning and they did not see this day. So, God, I thank you that we are able to see and celebrate this day. God, I ask you to bless us, O oh God. Bless those who lost their parents, O oh God, recently. We know they are still in pain. But, God, we thank you that when we are in Yeshua the Messiah, you are everything for us. You comfort the broken hearts. You lift up those who are burdened down. You set those free who are in captivity. God, I bless you for all your goodness because, God, you are good to us all the time. Even when things are going bad, God, you're still good. I could truly say there's nothing about you I could say is no good. God, I thank you when you afflict us, you're still, you're still good. I thank you, God, when we lose our loved ones, you still are good. God, I thank you when we have pain in our bodies, you're still good. God, so we bless you today for all your goodness. We bless you for being God, oh God, all by yourself. And we bless you for your son, your shoulder Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, my big brother. God, I thank you, oh God. Because of you, we can have life. And we can have peace and we can have joy that surpasses our own understanding. So God, I ask you to bless this day, oh God. Bless every day, oh God. In the name of Yahshua, bless fathers, oh God. Although we are not celebrating it as Father's Day, but we know there are some fathers playing two part, mother and fathers. There are some fathers are closer to their kids than their own mothers. Bless those, oh God, who are incarcerated, oh God, who have left their children to the grandparents and sometime to other relatives or sometime in some other homes, oh God, because they are locked up in jail, can't train up, raise up their own children. God bless them today. I know some of their hearts will be broken as well. God, but through it all, draw them that they can be the mothers they should be. Because we know you give us a chance, oh God, to repent and do those things that we haven't done before. Father, we have not been good mothers, oh God. Touch our hearts, oh God, that we will be good mothers, oh God. We will be good examples, oh God. We will walk in the right image, oh God, that our children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren and throughout generation, oh God, could grow up in you, oh God, knowing good from evil. God, I bless you today and I give you praise, honor, and glory. In the name of your holy son, Yeshua the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, I give you praise. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you all once again for joining me. I know some people probably sleeping late. Some people probably out for breakfast. And today is your day to celebrate. So wherever the Spirit of God leads you, hallelujah, be blessed today. We are covering, well, let me go back. First of all, just in case we have anybody out there that has not been adopted into the family of God, the Bible teaches us how we're justified by our faith, that we believe on God and believe that God raised his son, Yeshua the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, from the dead, we are justified by our faith. Then we are to confess that which we believe. The Bible says we confess with our mouth the Lord Yeshua, the Lord Jesus, and believe in our hearts that God has raised Yeshua the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. Out of the heart, man, believe in unto righteousness. 
repentance and confession is made unto salvation. Romans 10 and 13, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Mark 16, 16, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. First John 1 and 9, if we confess our sins, he faithfully just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Proverbs 28, 13, he that confesses and forsaketh his sins shall have mercy, but he that confesses and forsaketh not his sin will not prosper. This is my portion today. Do you choose to be blessed, healed, spiritually rich, and have peace in every area of your lives? Same thing. Do you choose to have your children, grandchildren, and so forth, blessed, healed, spiritually rich, and have peace in their lives? all of their days. Hallelujah. Our teaching from the last few, few weeks continue. Not sent to cover Proverb 31, 9 through 31. Many times on Mother's Day, people teach and preach out of that chapter because they speak of the virtual woman. I have done so. Because the Spirit is not leading me there today, I will not go there. So anyone can read Proverbs 31, 9 through 31. But he leading me to continue. Because Yeshua, Yeshua, Jesus said, You are my friends. If you keep on doing what I commanded you, if you do whatever I command you, you are my friends. So therefore, I will not have a special message for today. Again, I have taught Proverbs 31. I have looked at many women's in the Bible. So if you want to study your Bible and let something speak directly to you concerning mothers, there are good chapters in the Bible, verses in the Bible you can read. You can read about dear mothers. You go all the way back to the beginning. Even Adam. You can read about that. You can look at Deborah. You can look at Mary Magdalene. You can look at so many women in the Bible. Who does? So many that deal with women. If you want something special for today, that's where you need to do. Go back and read it. Study it for yourself. Again. We are hopeful to cover the statement this Sunday. I have been posting this out there for, I would say, a good four weeks, but we haven't gotten there yet. But we are going forward. I know if it be the Lord's will, we will cover some of this today. So someone may look at that and say, I've been seeing this every week. That because these are things we're covering. We're just not there yet. And so these are some of the things, six things of uh, six tribes of Israel were chosen to stand and pronounce the curses for disobedience. And six tribes of Israel was chosen to pronounce the blessings. Should we preach and teach the blessings and the curses? Absolutely. If crooked, make it straight. If wrong, make it right. So yesterday I was dealing with, okay, Lord, what do you want me to teach you? You want me to teach something about uh, Mother's Day, like out of Proverbs or some other chapters as well? And I heard in my spirit, no, because what you're teaching can also apply to mothers today. And so what we're going to look at some things that we should pass it on and pass it down. Again, pass it on and pass it down. Again, I asked this question at the beginning. I will ask it again. Do you choose to be blessed, healed, spiritually rich? Because you can be rich in stuff, rich in money, rich in things, but your heart can be poor. Why? Well, let me finish the verse. If you choose to be blessed, healed, spiritually rich, and have peace 
in every area of your lives? Do you choose to have your children and their seeds, that mean passed down from generation to generation, blessed, heal, spiritually rich, and have peace in every area of their life? Then we need to pass it on and pass it down. Because when we pass things on as mothers and fathers, it could be filtered down from generation to generation. A good example, when we go, say, to the doctor and we're having problem with our hearts, the doctor want to know, what about your family? They want to know your family history. Did your mom ever have a had a heart have a heart attack? Did your dad have a heart attack? Did your sister have a heart attack? Uh, did this? They're gonna trace it down because they're trying to find out where the root cause, where it come from. And so when we pass good things down, it can be passed down from generation to generation. The same way if we pass bad things down. It can go from generation to generation to generation, just like diseases, just like curses, which mean, I always use this example, if you take a husband that beat his wife, the son or the daughter may hate that husband for beating the wife or the mom. But if that curse doesn't get stopped, it get passed down from generation to generation if the person doesn't learn from that. Because so many times, although that son, he hates his, hate his father for mistreating his mom. He want to kill his father sometimes. He get in a fight with his father. Sometimes he'll grow up and do exactly the same thing. That's what you call curses being passed down from generation to generation. But there are some people break it at that point. They say, I will not be like my dad. Oh, I will not be like my mom. I will not be a drunker like my mom. I will not be an alcoholic like my mom. I will not do this, uh, mistreat my children like my mom. I'm going to be better. I'm going to be a good example. And that can get passed down as well from generation to generation. That's what you call the blessing being passed down from generation to generation. So it need to stop with someone. It need to stop at certain place in order for that chance, I mean, that change to take place. Now, if we want these things, then let us get trained up so that we can train our children and they can teach their seeds correctly. Why did I say it need to stop with us? And we need to be trained up the right way. Why? Because if you're a mom and you was never trained up the right way, how are you going to train your children up the right way? Because you, that mother or that father was never trained the right way. So they just might not train their children the right way for the simple reason. We can't teach what we do not know. We shouldn't even try to teach something that we haven't received for ourselves. So first of all, my life needs to change before I can be a good example to my daughter. My daughter's life needs to change so she can be a good example to her children. Her children's life needs to change so they can be a good example to their children. And this is how it get passed down, blessing from generation to generation. Now, this is where we stop because this is something, as I said before, should we teach the curses and the blessing? Yes. Why not? Because we do not want to be cursed. We want to be blessed. We do not want our family to be cursed, or hopeful not. We want them to be blessed. So we need to teach them about the blessing and the curse. It just reminded me... Um, Yesterday, the three-year-old, and I'm trying to see what it was, and I asked her. It was nothing I would say big, but a lie is a lie no matter what it is. You know, it's no small lie. A lie is a lie. You can't change a lie into the truth. So that's why we're to tell the truth. 
And so I asked Alea, which is three years old, and I asked her if she, I can't remember, if she did something or ate something, and I can't remember exactly what it was. And she says, no. And I said, Leia, did you do that? And she looked at me with them big, pretty eyes. I said, don't lie to Grandma. God doesn't like it when we lie. Always tell the truth. And that baby looked at me right in my eyes. And she said, yes. Other words, she said, yes. And then she gave me a big hug. I said, honey, I said, because always tell the truth. She understood that. So this is why we train up children in the way that they should go and we correct them because sometimes they may lie and we laugh at it and that doesn't encourage them to change because we didn't correct them. And that's why it goes right back to being a good mother. The, the Bible says train up a child in the way that they should go. And when they old, they will not depart from it. So she can get that in her spirit. And of course, Satan want her to lie. But then the spirit will raise up a standard and say, you should not lie. God said, God doesn't like that. God said, thou shalt not lie. So that will help her not to lie because she see, she didn't get in trouble for telling the truth. And many times when we lie, we get in trouble for lying because we did not tell the truth. So being a good mother is to always be what? Truthful. Everybody's not going to like it. We understand that. But my Bible says, speak to every man the truth, which means it's up to that person to receive it or to reject it. If they receive it, that's a blessing. If they reject it, then that's a curse, which means it's not causing you to change. And so you see, if you go through this, it's no reason to feel like you feel like you're a curse. I didn't say anybody out there a curse. But God teaches us in his word, curses and blesses. Blessing. That's why the Bible speaks a cursed thing. So these things, when we do not go along with what God said, it become a cursed thing to us. Not saying you are cursed, but when we disobey it, we can be cursed because it is a cursed thing. So I'm reading Deuteronomy 27, and we covered a few of these verses some time ago, but then the Lord took me back to do the whole chapter. So that's why we're going through these chapters now. A 27. A curse on anyone who causes a blind person to lose his way on the road. All the people are to say, Amen. Now, as we said, some people say, Amen means so be it. But we also know when we say amen, we are agreeing to what is being said. So other words, we see there is an agreement. So be it or amen, I'm agreeing with what is being said. So listen to what it says again. A curse on anyone, not saying you're cursed, but it's saying anyone that does it. A curse on anyone who causes a blind person to lose his way on the road. All the people are to say, Amen. So what we're going to do, look at a few scripture and see how we can cause a blind person to lose his way. Say a person that's in Christ, in Yeshua, they could, we could cause them to be cursed and a curse can come on us because we are leading them the wrong way. We are causing them to be blind. Remember Yeshua said, I came to open the, reopen the eyes of the blind and those who could not see, I came that they might see and those who could see that they might not see again. And so here, how we can cause a person to go to hell. 
Other words, we're laying a stumbling block in front of them. And the Bible commands us not to do that. Which means, say a person is out there living right, and I may say to them, why are you bothering reading that Bible? You don't need to read the Bible. Why are you wasting your time going to church? There's no real God. Why are you going to church? You don't have to do those things. Just go out and enjoy your life. You're going to heaven. You're going to enter into those gates. And you're going to have eternal life forever. That can cause a blind person to stumble. Cause a person to stop following Yahshua. And start following false teaching. Matthew 15, 14. Complete Jewish Bible. Let them be. They are blind godders. Other words, when you go back and you study this chapter, you notice Yeshua is teaching about them following their commandment, but they are not following God's commandment. So he comes to uh, 1514. So if you haven't studied, study that. It tells us what defiles a person. So he said, let them be. They are blind guiders. In other words, they are blind leaders. They're trying to lead people, but they are blind, and the people are blind, and they're both going to fall into a ditch. So let me read the whole verse. Let them be. They are blind guiders. When a blind man guider, guides another blind man, both will fall in a ditch. So what is he saying? If I can't see in the spirit, if I'm blind by the devil... Now, the person that I'm trying to guide is blind as well, and we both going to fall into a pit. That means we both are going to hell. A.M.P. Same verse. Leave them alone. They are blind guiders, leading blind followers. See, go a little farther. Let us know that's who is speaking of that guider is someone that leading the people of God. That's why I said leading blind followers. If a blind man leads a blind man, both will fall into a pit. Well, we know that pit means hell, not just going out there uh, falling into a pit, which means if there's a hole in the ground and I can't see the hole, and I say, follow me, I can fall into the hole, and then the person behind me, because they're following me, they fall into the hole as well. So what happened? I stumble, and I cause them to stumble as well. Isaiah 29, 18, complete Jewish Bible. On that day, the deaf will hear the words of a book. Remember, we say Bible, but it is a book. You will not find in your Bible, read the Bible. It speaks of the book. It's the holy book. So he said, on that day, the deaf will hear the words of a book. That means, he said, blessed are the ears that hear the word of God. See, we can read it sometime and we are not even listening to what is being said. Sometimes we are reading our mind in some place completely different. So it's on that day, the deaf will hear the words of a book and out of gloom and darkness the eyes of the blind will see. Think about that. And out of the gloom and darkness, the eyes of the blind will see. Well, what happens when we read the word of God, although we may be spiritually blind, but when we read it, we understand it, we receive it, now we are no longer blind in that area. Now we can see. So that's what the word of God does. It's light because Yahshua came in the book. That means he came as a light. So God's word is light. It opened up dark things that we did not see. We didn't want to hear. We could not understand. But now I can say I once was blind. Like the song says, I once was past ten. Not that I still am. So yeah, we all was born spiritually blind. So I can say I once was blind, but praise God, I'm no longer blind. Now I can see through the spirit, not only with my natural eyes, but I see through the spirit. I can discern what's good and what's evil. 
Now, do I know everything good and evil? No. That's why I continue to read and study my Bible. If I'm doing something that I was blind to, I ask God, help me not to do it again. Praise God, I can see. Now I can repent because I couldn't do anything about what I did not know. That's why the truth makes us free. Hallelujah. He says, Isaiah 42, 18, complete Jewish Bible. Listen, you deaf, look, you blind, so that you will see. Well, we know plenty mothers are deaf when it comes to the word of God. Many mothers are blind when it comes to the word of God. So if they're deaf, then how can their children hear? If they are blind, how can their children see? So like, first their ears need to be open so they can train up their children so their ears can be open. And now that parent, mother, can see. And now that children, or those children, can see. And then hopeful their children can see. And hope of their children can see. And this is what you call pass it on from generation to generation. So that you can see. Hallelujah. Matthew 6, 23. AMP. But if your eyes. Let me go back. Yeah, Matthew 23, AMP. But if your eye is bad. Spiritually blind. See? That's what I love about certain translation. It tells you when it's speaking of certain things. It's speaking of spiritually. But if your eye is bad. Spiritually blind. Your whole body will be full of darkness, devoid of God's precept. And see, some people can't understand God's precept because they are spiritually blind. So if the very light inside you, your inner self, your heart, your conscience is darkness, how great and terrible it's that darkness. So it let us know we're spiritually blind. Our whole body is in darkness. We can't understand God's word. We can't understand God's precept, which means his commandments and things. And so because of that darkness, it's blind our hearts. We can't see. It blind our mind. We can't see. Our conscience doesn't bother us because we're in darkness. That's why it says how great and terrible is that darkness. Deuteronomy 27, 1, complete Jewish Bible. Then Moses and all the leaders of Israel gave order to the people. They said, observe all the mitzvah commandments I'm giving you today. When you cross the Jordan to the land Adonai, meaning God, your God is giving you, you are to set up large stones. Put plaster on them and off and after crossing over, write this Torah law on them every word. So here we can see they was to put plaster on the stone and write every word, but they are not to use any metal things to engrave because God engraved his 10th commandment with his finger and other people if they start engraving something it, it can't be removed it's hard to get it removed and so they were supposed to write this torah law on them every word so that you can enter the land adonai your god is giving you a land flowing with milk and honey as adonai the god of your ancestors promised you well, we said before, when we look at how God made promises, there is an if and a but, which means he made promises if they did what he commanded them to do, they would enter into the promised land. But we know they did not all enter into the promised land. Well, God made us that same a promise if we do obey his word, we will enter into those gates. But the but part, if we do not, then God is not, I mean, he doesn't have to 
fulfill that promise because he says, if we do this, but if we do not. Four, same chapter, verse four. When you have crossed the Jordan, you are to set up these stones as I am ordering you today at Mount Ebel. I think it's, oh, I keep forgetting what the E-B-A-L. Abel, uh, E-B-A-L, I can pronounce it sometimes, sometimes I can't. And put plaster on them. There you are to erect an altar to Adonai, your God. An altar made of stones, you are not to use any iron tool on them. Notice that. A altar, a altar made of stones, you are not to use any iron tool on them. Because God, again, God engraved things with his finger. He wanted them to write them. But, or to build the altar of Adonai, your God, of uncut stones. And you are to offer burnt offering on it to Adonai, your God. Now, right here, if we did not continue to read, we would think these things was to continue. But we are see as we go forward, God had no pleasure in them. So I always wonder if it was Yeshua telling them to do certain things. Because the Bible says God never had any uh, pleasure in those things. So let's look at seven. Also, you are to sacrifice peace offering. So when people look at God's 10th commandment, they think it has to do with burnt offering, sacrifices. No. Let me finish this first. Also, you are to sacrifice peace offering, eat there, and be joyful in the presence of Adonai, your God. Notice, they was, they was to do the thing in the presence of of Adonai, your God. Well, you go back and when you study scripture, you'll notice both names with Adonai, but there's one true God, but Yeshua was also called God, as Moses was called God, as many other people was called God, but only one true God. You need, now here, where you see, here, you neither will nor were pleased with animal sacrifices, meat offering, burnt offering, and sin offering, things which are offered in accordance with the Torah law. So you see here, there is a different law than the Torah, God's commandment, 10th commandment. So there was many laws, many Torahs. But this has to do with the law of these particular offering. Then there's a law of circumcision. Now, did God write any of these with his finger? Absolutely not. These are not in the 10th commandment. Mark 12, 33, complete Jewish Bible. And that loving him with all one heart, understanding and strength and loving one neighbor as oneself mean more than all the burnt offerings and sacrifices. Now here, this is in God's commandment. So when we love one another, we do not do evil, harm to one another. When we teach the truth of God, we do not do harm or hurt any anyone, but the person may feel like they are being hurt, but the word was not sent for to curse them. It was sent for to bless them. Reading Hebrew 10, 6 through 10. I have taught this whole chapter before. But study this chapter. No, you have not. No, you have not been pleased with burnt offerings and sin offering. Then I said, look, this is Yeshua the Messiah. This is Jesus Christ. Because he said God never had any pleasure in them. So that's what he said. Then I said, look, in the scroll of the book, it is written about me. That means it was written about Yeshua. I have 
come to do your will. No, I didn't come to do my will. I came to do my father's will. In saying first, you neither will nor were pleased with animal sacrifices, meal offerings, burnt offering, sin offering, things which are offered in according with the Torah law. So here we see Yeshua is the one that said God never had pleasure in them. And then he goes back, he said, and saying first, you neither will, in other words, God never will that, nor will God please with those sacrifices. And that's why they was done away with completely. Did God write any of these with his fingers again? Absolutely not. These are not in God's 10th commandment. And then, this is Yahshua, and then look, I have come to do your will. That Yahshua came to do his father's will. He take away the first system. Now that means God got rid of that altogether. He take away the first system in order to set up the second system. In other words, the first system of all these offerings could not cleanse a person's heart. Circumcision could not cleanse a person's heart. And so that's why Yahshua came in the volume of the book to teach us what God was pleased with. God was pleased with his sacrifice, not with any sacrifices of those uh, other things. Uh, verse 10, same chapter. It is in connection with this will that we have been separated for God and made holy once and for all. In other words, once we are separated for God, we are made holy once and for all. But what that once and for all mean is through the sacrifice of Yahshua. It doesn't mean that we never sin again and all our sins are forgiven us. So let me finish the whole verse. It is in connection with this will that we have been separated for God and made holy once and for all through the offering of Yeshua, the Messiah's body. That means when Yeshua, Jesus, offered his body, all those other sacrifices was done away with. Because God, again, never had any pleasure, never will sacrifices. And so we can see it was like, yeah, sure. And so that's why it's a Adonai, your God, sometimes. Because Yeshua was also, again, called Adonai. He was also called God by God. That's why when you go to Hebrew, it said, and thou, O God. So the Bible say again, many gods, many so-called gods in heaven and in earth, but there's what? One true God. Uh, Psalms 47. Sacrifices and grain offering, you don't want. Burn offerings and sin offering, you didn't demand. Instead, you have given me open ears. Well, when you think, uh, remember it was speaking about, you know, People closing their ears, open ears. So, which means when my ear is open, I can hear better. And that's why the Bible says, bless is the ear that hear. So, mothers, grandmothers, and so forth, if you have open ears, that means to hear the word of God, you are blessed. And because you have open ears to hear the word of God, you can be a good example to those coming after you. You could be a good example to your friend, a good example sometimes to your mom, not sometimes, many times to your mom, because sometimes it is the children that get their mothers to go back to church. And I'll be honest, I had stopped going to church. My daughter went back to church and that's what started going to church with her friend that's what got me back into church for a while. Then I stopped going to church again. It was my friend that came to me and asked me, would you like to go to church with me? I went to church with her, and then she stopped going to the church. And so it's good to start something, but that's not enough. You need to continue that which you start. Your ear can be open on Sunday and closed on Monday. We don't want that. Our ears are to continuously be open to hear the word of God. That's why Yeshua said, blessed is the ear that hear. Blessed are the eyes that see. And I always said, blessed is the heart 
that receive. Hallelujah. Isaiah 111. Why are all these sacrifices offered to me? Asked Adonai. I'm fed up <laughs> with burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fatted animals. I get no pleasure from the blood of bulls, lambs, and goat. Other words here, all the way back in Isaiah 111, he was fed up. Fed up with them. He didn't get any pleasure out of those things. Deuteronomy 27, 7. Also, you are to sacrifice peace offering. Eat there again and be joyful in the presence of honor now your God. So what I do when I use cross-references, I come back and I pick back up on that same verse that I read before so it will flow right. So that's why I want you to know we go back into also you are to sacrifice peace offering. Well, that was back at that time. You are to write on the stone again all the words of this Torah law very clearly. Next, Moses and the priests who are Levites spoke to all Israel. They said, be quiet and listen, Israel. Now notice, they said, be quiet and listen, Israel. Well, we know sometimes, you know, uh, someone was talking the other day. We had family here over the weekend and friends over the weekend. And someone was trying to say something. They said, Mary, you can't hear that well. My daughter probably say that's true. And I go, I can't hear because the other people are talking. And we know when everybody is talking, it's harder to hear. So in order to hear clearly, people need to be quiet. I have been in church and someone trying to talk in my ear and I'm like, don't do that. I can't hear. I had to confront two people in our ministry. I'm preaching and they are talking and I had to confront them. I haven't had that problem anymore. So sometimes we just deal with stuff. We don't say anything. So therefore we just keep dealing with the same thing over and over and over again instead of correcting the person and maybe they are changed. But let them know when you correct them, you are sincere. And they thought I was angry. I said, no, I'm not angry. I said, but that's disrespectful. And I've never had that problem again. And so what happened, people will disrespect you if you allow them to do so. What's going to make them change? They feel like, well, that's not bothering you. You don't care. So I'm just going to keep doing the same thing over and over again. So that's why correction. The Lord loves us. Therefore, he constantly is correcting us until we harden our heart. We stop listening. We stop uh, uh, close our eyes. He's like, okay. I'm not speaking to you anymore because I'm, you just storing my word behind your back and like I'm wasting my time, so I might as well stop speaking. And some people wonder why they can't hear from the Lord because they ain't doing nothing well. What he say to them, that's why. Be quiet and listen. See, when the Lord is speaking, I want to listen because that's how I learn. When I'm reading the Bible, I'm not just reading. When I'm studying the Bible, I'm listening to what I am studying. Like many people just read it, but they are not studying the Word of God. Therefore, they do not come out with the right revelation. So we need to be quiet and we need to listen. That's why many times, like the Bible speak of, you know, when you pray, go into your closet. That doesn't mean you in your home and you need to go into a closet to pray. But if you got children running around, your husband or a friend or whoever watching TV, the TV is blasting, you cannot concentrate. You cannot hear what is being said. So you might need to go in that closet and close the door. Be quiet and listen, Israel. Today, you have become the people of Adonai, your God. Notice who he's speaking to. He's not speaking at that time to the Egyptian. As we said, the Lord said the Egyptian should be his people. And we looked at it the other day where he said they were his people. Be quiet and listen, Israel. Today, you have become the people of Adonai. So that let us know. The word of God is anyone can live by it. 
But the word of God was given to his people. Those who claim the name of Yeshua the Messiah, those are the one who are God's people. That's why the Bible says God is the God of the living. He's not the God of the dead. If God is your father, you are commanded to listen and obey what he says. Say it again. If God is your father, you are commanded to listen to him and obey what he says. Verse number 10. Therefore, you are to listen to what Adonai, your God, says and obey his mitzvah, commandments, and laws. In other words, if God is our God, we are to listen to him. That means observe his commandment and his statute, which I'm giving you today. In other words, sometimes we look at certain things and then we do not look at certain things that was given at that particular time. Because God's 10th commandment is what we should observe and do. That's why in Matthew, that last chapter, I'm thinking 28, where Yeshua said, Go ye therefore, teaching all nations to observe everything I have commanded you. So we see here, Moses was teaching them the same thing. They was to observe and to do. Not just observe it, but to do it. The same day, wow, I'm just going to get to a few verses. The same day, Moses commissioned the people, uh, yeah. the same day, Moses commissioned the people as followed. The sixth tribe shall bless the people. That was Cinnamon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Joseph, Benjamin. These are people that those 12 tribes were split into six. That means six was to bless and the other six, uh, six was to uh, bless and the, yeah, the other six were to curse Israel. Other words, it's not that they went around and said, you're cursed, you're cursed, you're cursed. No, what they did, they taught them what they needed to do to be blessed, what they needed to do to be cursed. Now we see the curses came before the blessing. So when we go down to verse number Deuteronomy 27, 15, and this is where the curses really start. And just think, many of just want to hear the blessings, right? But we don't want to hear the curse. You can tell someone something good about them and they feel blessed. But when they tell you tell something bad about them, you feel bad, you feel hurt, you feel cursed. Although we feel that way, we are to get over it and try to correct why we feel that way, why the person is saying that to us. Sometimes the person is right, sometimes they are wrong. And so I may get upset sometime, and then I say, Lord, if I'm wrong, please forgive me. Lord, if I'm wrong, show me. Lord, help me to do better. Because, yeah, we don't always do everything right. If someone say everything I say is right, everything I do is right, everything I said, it always, no, not all the time. But we are to learn from our mistake. That's why the Bible said there is no one that sinneth not. That means we will sin sometimes, come short of the glory of God, but we are to learn a lesson from it because then there another scripture said, the righteous sinneth not because the seed remains in him and he cannot sin. So what is it saying? The righteous does not practice sin. They correct their mistake. They confess, they repent, they turn away from it. But if the person is unrighteous, they just go on like nothing was said, they didn't do anything wrong, so they just don't care, and they'll keep doing it over and over and over again. Verse 17. Here it is. I said, hopefully we'll get into it, so we'll get into a few verses, and if the Lord's will, pick up on it tomorrow night. 17. A curse on anyone who moved his neighbor's boundary marker. 
all the people are to say amen. Now, what you think about boundary marker, it's like you build a house and you have a certain uh, state, uh, have states there to separate your land, especially when it's in a new development. And then they, they already came out, they marked that land, and then you take it and move it over a little bit. And so that can bring a curse on us. I remember when I was in uh, Waco and I had my house built. Nobody, it was one house, like just uh, one house, like a model was sitting in front of me. And there was no other houses around me. And so I saw this marker out there with the little flag on it. And I said to myself, oh, I can just move that over a little bit and get more land. And then I go like, oh, no, like that's wrong. I'll be sitting there and know I'm doing something wrong. And so, yeah, we'll be tried by things, but that doesn't mean we have to do it. And then if we do it, we need to confess and repent and move it back where it was in the first place. Hallelujah. So it says in uh, King James, same verse, 19, 18. Curse be he that mark. Oh, no. Uh, a curse. Oh, I'm reading King James. Curse be he that makest the blind to wander out of the way, and all the people shall say amen. I covered that one earlier. So I'm going to stop here for time's sake, and if the Lord's will, we'll pick up on the study uh, tomorrow. So once again, happy Mother Day all the days of your life. If we are good mothers, let's listen to the word of God. Teach our children, no matter how old they are, and then encourage them to teach their children. So let's pass the blessing down from generation to generation. We are blessed when we listen to the word of God. We are blessed when we obey the word of God. Although we may die and leave this world earlier, we'll go to a better place. But what happened if we're under the curse? We are not under the blessing. We are under the curses. Bad thing will happen to us, and that can get passed down from generation to generation. I choose for my family to be blessed. I can't make them be blessed, but that's my prayer. That's my hope, that they all be blessed in the Lord for life eternal. Not just blessed here in this earth and go to a place that nobody want to go. Whether they believe it or not, heaven is real, hell is real, God is real, Yeshua is real, the Rush Harkosh Holy Ghost is real, and Satan is real as well. Yeshua came to make us free, so we will not be under control of the adversary, but we can still listen to him, or we can listen to the voice of Yeshua the Messiah. That's why God said, this is my beloved son, hear ye him. But he doesn't make us hear. That's a choice that we make. Amen. Hallelujah. Once, I, uh, once again, just in case we have anybody out there that has not been adopted into the family of God, the Bible teaches us how we're justified by our faith that we believe on God and believe that God raised his son, Yeshua the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, from the dead, we're justified by our faith. Then the Bible tells us to confess that which we believe. If we confess with our mouth the Lord Yeshua and believe in our hearts that God raised Yeshua from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Out of the heart, man believeth unto righteousness, and confession is made unto salvation. Uh, Mark 16. Uh, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believes not shall be damned. First John 1 and 9, if we confess our sins, he faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Proverbs 28, 13, he that confesses and forsakes his sin shall have mercy, but he that confesses and forsakes not his sin will not prosper. Hallelujah. I pray that you will have a blessed day today, every day of your life. The blessing of the Lord be upon you. Father, I come before you once again, and I bless your holy name. God, I thank you for your word. I give you praise, honor, and glory. I thank you for teaching me and teaching through me. God, I thank you for all you have done in my life. I thank you for allowing me to see this day, oh God, and every day, oh God. I give you praise because it's not promised. 
God bless every person today, everyone that may come later. God bless them in a spiritual way, oh God. Give them ears to hear, eyes to see, and a heart to receive. God, I give you praise, honor, and glory every day of my life. I give you thanks. Hallelujah. You all be blessed in the name of Yeshua the Messiah. I love you with the love of the Messiah, Yeshua.